uh, our issue is that we think that America has done a number of key mistakes along the way, and its population are, is just not understanding that for the most part, the, the baby boom miracle is over. They have, uh, America doesn't have any specific advantages over other countries that they had during the 20th century, <clears throat> and that Americans should uh, consider the fact that they might uh, need to live off of this thirty to fifty thousand dollar a year median income, and the solutions that will be introduced in this new decade, like you say, Mike, uh, they could be quite controversial. Um, and, and depending on the president, depending on the environment, that's that's worrisome because uh, it it introduces um, a lot of uncertainty. SDBullion.com is a high volume physical gold, silver, and precious metal dealer. We are committed to being your trusted source for low cost, highest quality, investment grade bullion products. Visit sdbullion.com for more information. Welcome to another exclusive. I'm excited to have returning guest, Mr. Leo Gantz. He's the creator and founder of Wealth Research Group. Today he joins us to share his thoughts on the financial markets, global economy, and a variety of other subject matter. So, Leo Gantz, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for having me. Well, I appreciate you taking time to join us. We're at the end of the 2019, a, a couple of weeks left, and then we're heading into a new decade. And I'm curious to find out at this current moment, you know, what you're keeping your eye on, what concerns you, what excites you. Before we get to that, let's start off. What concerns you the most as we end 2019? Well, I think the, the most important uh, concern that I have is that the Federal Reserve has not changed its policies or its outlook. It's still operating in uh, 2008 mentality. It's still operating in 2008 survival mode. They're, they're doing the same strategies as they've done a decade ago. Could you, could you think about the person you were in 2008 compared to the person you are right now? Can you tell me that you're operating in the same way? Can you tell me that your thoughts are in, uh, the same thoughts, etc.? You've grown, you've developed, you've changed. And what has the Federal Reserve done? It's, it, it, it does QE programs. It buys mortgage-backed securities and it buys bonds to suppress interest rates. And it slashes interest rates mostly. That's, that's what it does. It does QE programs, slashes interest rates, and see what the market reacts and, and then acts from there. And that, that's just not enough. Now, when Trump came into to office, he said, man, this, this is not enough. I have to do something else. I have to um, you know, bring America into 2016, 2017, etc. So he cut corporate tax rates. He started renegotiating the trade. Uh, with China and other countries as well, but mostly with uh, everything that, that America has to do with China. And uh, so the government is starting to, to think differently, to move on. The Fed isn't. And that really concerns me uh, because for two reasons. One, we've been on a 10-year expansion. You know, I've talked about in other interviews where I, uh, I sort of describe the landscape as such. Could you imagine a building where at the second floor or the penthouse, whatever you want to uh, think about, there's a closely knit amount of people. Uh, the, the government is there and uh, the heads of corporations are there and the rich are there. And there's a party going on in, in that floor on the penthouse, the second level, whatever you want to uh, imagine. And there's a party and the DJ is the Federal Reserve. It's cranking up the music and everyone's having a great time. Um, and it's because it's, it's giving up this great music all the time. There's drinks everywhere. There's, the people, the population, they're hearing that there's a party on, on the top level, but, but they, they don't understand uh, too much because they can't really hear it. They only know it's there. And that was what was sold to the general population in 2008, that there's a DJ. He's gonna have, everyone's going to have a great party. And you will be included. Even if you're not invited, there will be a trickle effect, they called it. There will be something where you participate as well. The problem is that the people on that floor did not open the doors, did not open the windows, 
did not punch a hole in the ground, you cannot hear the party and you cannot enjoy it. You're not drinking the drinks, you're not having the food, you're not dancing. And that is the problem with what the Fed has done. It's created a party that only helps 10% of the, uh, of the population, 10 to 15% of the population, now probably 20, 25, because there's just more people that, that get invited. But certainly for most Americans, for most Europeans, uh, the recovery of the past 10 years did not so much include them. Maybe they can hear the music, but they can't really enjoy the party. And that's their argument. They're saying, look, we are financing this DJ. This is taxpayer money. This is deficits that we will have to pay for as much as you will have to pay for it. But it's, it's unbelievable that only you get to enjoy it. So what are we going to do? And uh, the government is trying to be the one that says, hey, let's change the rules here. Let's include more people. Let's see what we can do. And to, to not only grow the wealth by, which it's growing, there's no doubt the world is getting richer by a second, but it's getting richer and fewer and fewer people are, are eating the, the, the bigger pie. And that's, a, that's what concerns me. Um, it's not so much how the world is behaving on a, um, on, on a financial sense, but more how it's acting on a social economic sense, because obviously technology is amazing. It's booming. The, the world is so much better than, than it was in terms of comfort. Could you imagine trying to listen to the amount of music, to the amount of information that you devour in a day on YouTube? Could you imagine just trying to store that in cassettes or CDs or whatever in the house? <laughs> Yeah. Could you imagine trying to calculate everything that you can do in a, uh, on, on your phone and taking pictures and everything that, that a piece of phone can do? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's not, you can fit it in the pocket or whatever. The world is, is becoming amazing um, and, and much more westernized, much more comfortable. Um, you know, you got planes that take you everywhere. There's a plane out that goes from Europe to Australia direct, like 20 hours in the air. Without, it's a, we live in incredible times. The problem is, if you can imagine you have a bucket and you're standing inside of a great gushing stream of water, pure water, gray water, but for most people, they're holding the bucket upside down. So the water is just hitting it and not getting in. And that's why they're, they're really frustrated because they see all this abundance, but they get none of it. And when people, when the mass, you know, when the masses get upset about it, there's usually a short-term fix instead of a systematic structural uh, fix from the core. And that's where uh, my fear stems from, that the solutions that we will be introduced to are not the solutions that really would help um, in the long term. In fact, the solutions might be to shrink, uh, inadvertently to shrink the wealth by. Now, that's, that might be uh, uh, fun to see that the rich are not uh, having a good time, but you're not going to have a good time either. In other words, you're going to move from from productive capitalism that is not inclusive to unproductive capitalism that no one wins in. Um, and that's uh, that's my biggest. If you if you go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash reset, we talk about it also in wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash attack, where uh, our issue is that we think that America has done a number of key mistakes along the way and its population are, is just not understanding that for the most part, the, the baby boom miracle is over. They have, uh, America doesn't have any specific advantages over other countries that they had during the 20th century <clears throat> and that Americans should uh, consider the fact that they might uh, need to live off of this thirty to fifty thousand dollar a year median income, which in the U.S., um, if you divide the tax obligations by taxpayers, you reach a point where each taxpayer owes about forty-two thousand dollars annual. So you are living in a country with permanent deficits that cannot sustain them, and the solutions that will be introduced in this new decade, like you say, Mike, uh, they can be quite controversial. Um, and, and depending on the president, depending on the environment, that's, that's worrisome because uh, it, it introduces um, a lot of uncertainty. 
Right. So in, to go back to that analogy initially about you know, the music uh, top floor, people can hear it, but they really can't. They're not enjoying yeah. the full effects of the, mu of the music. So it sounds like the, the music, the party, the, the DJ, the Federal Reserve, central bankers around the world, they're going to try to increase the volume or have the governments somehow get the people involved to where it's not going to come to complete stop just yet. So in, a, in, an analogy, in an analogy, in a sense, the music will increase louder until, but one day it has to come to an end. The party can't go on forever. So in the meantime, it's going to get louder so that more people can hear it on the bottom floor until it stops. Give us, the, give us a scenario how that might play out. Yeah, so look, for the Fair Reserve, um, it's, it, it's, it has a number of tricky issues that it needs to work out. The Fed's fund rate, is uh, so low right now that in a downturn, their ability to cut rates to zero, for example, as they've done uh, previously in this decade, um, it, it's not a meaningful. Um, it's not a meaningful tool anymore. In other words, most co corporations and the U.S. government have already refinanced or financed their their obligations at very low rates. So when you uh, introduce low rates again, you're not shocking them with some amazing upside that they haven't seen before. That's one thing to remember. Um, in, in other words, the effectiveness of this is like uh, you going to, a, uh, to one of the best steakhouses in New York City, you're sitting there, it's amazing. You've just had an, an amazing steak. The, the chef goes table to table and comes to your table and says, Mike, how is that steak? You say, amazing. And you say, okay. And the chef tells you, I'm, I'm going to give you a, a really, a you, the biggest steak in, my, in the house for free. You tell him, look, I'm full. I'm, I'm done. I'm, uh, I, you know, uh, he tells you it's prime. It's, you have never seen anything like it. You tell him, look, I'm, I'm full. Can, would you mind taking a rain check on that? Because that's what the Fed is proposing. It's proposing something that the government and corporations don't need that much. The difference between corporations and the government, the co corporations are liable for their debts, right? If, if they get into debt and they, uh, and they, can, they cannot finance it with, um, with either rolling the debt over or with earnings, then they default. Mm -hmm. So corporations are living in the, world, the real world. Governments, they can, uh, you know, they can roll over their debts for 50 to 100 years. You've seen these bonds that are getting introduced in, in uh, first world countries. So the government will be able to enjoy these low rates. If the Fed cuts rates to zero again, Trump or whoever comes next will refinance the national debt 50 to 100 years into the future because that's the, the right way to, to do if you're a politician. If you can kick the can down the road to 50 years from now at no cost, in, in other words, with no interest payments, my God, why not, right? Um, so, and watch this. so will the world sit around and watch that? Will they watch yeah. the leading currency Look. of the world refinance for 50 to 100 years, knowing that that's not a solution, it's just a patch job? Well, two things, and, and you're correct, and, and, and that's getting to my next point. So if you, if you look at wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash bear, you'll see how I introduce 11 strategies, proprietary strategies to handle a bear market. And the reason I'm telling you about a bear market is because of this. When you do what, what you just said, when you lower rates to zero and let the U.S. government refinance for 50 to 100 years, the, the, the message the Federal Reserve is sending to the rest of the world is, we are the reserve currency for everyone, but we are U.S.-centered. And that's not the message that the Federal Reserve wants to send right now. In other words, the, uh, uh, you know, if, if you were a central bank only of the U.S., and you serve only the U.S., which the, the Fed is supposed to do, they would cut rates to zero by nightfall. Why not? You save about $1.6 billion a day in interest payments to the U.S. Gov to the taxpayer, or about $600 billion a year. You can save taxpayers $6 billion a year if you cut rates to zero, Washington finances the, the debt, and creditors from around the world, you know, on a free market, they decide that they, uh, they want to lend the, the government money for some reason, right? It's going on already. Europe is, re, is financing its debt at, at negative rates. In other words, people are willing to 
lend Germany money, lend Bulgaria money, lend Sweden, Norway, you know, Holland, etc., money and get less than the principal in return 10 years down the road. So it's already happening in Japan and, and it's, it's, it's a norm. It's not something that you're introducing. There's already $17 trillion of debt that is issued at negative rates floating around. So, uh, but, but the problem is, as you said, they, these are mostly contained currencies. These are mostly currencies that are not being used on an international basis. 50% of the supply of dollars is outside of US banking systems. It's an international currency. And that's, the, and that's the difference. You cannot do anything to the dollar that is groundbreaking without impacting the rest of the world. Now, everyone already knows that 2008 proved to the international community that the US banking system, the Wall Street, it cannot be the leader of the 21st century. So everyone already knows this marriage of the dollar as the reserve currency is a dysfunctional marriage. The problem is that the price of divorce, in other words, replacing the dollar, scares uh, the, the married couple even more. It's an it's a easy analogy to understand. A couple is married, they fight all the time, they know that they should get divorced, but they fear uh, the life that, that awaits them after the divorce. So they stay married, they, they stay married because that's the devil they know. And it's better than the devil they don't know. So that's where the world is. Every, everyone understands that a country of 330 million people in a world of 8 billion people, in other words, a country that makes up less than 5% of the world's population, um, you know, it's true that they're the biggest economy, but that's going to be replaced in a few years as well. Uh, uh, Chinese GDP is going to surpass America's GDP in this decade, in this new decade. Uh, India is going to be the most populated country in the world, surpassing China, and Africa is going to double in size between now and 2050. There's going to be 10 billion people in the world, 400 million of them in America. You know, the economic activity that America can produce will probably not be at, uh, as it is today, a quarter of the world's activity. So it shouldn't be the reserve currency. When and where? Is it going to change? Nobody knows, but that's part of the fa of the reason that uh, investing is, is very difficult. You need mm -hmm. to diversify. You need to uh, own different asset classes, and you need to do it wisely. That that's the reason that we publish Wealth Research for, for that <clears throat> particular reason. We devour all of this information. Mm -hmm. We read. Uh, we have time to interview CEOs. We have we have time to to network and con and go to many conferences around the world. We where we hear. Uh, you know, billionaires speak and we can go through their filings, their 13 Fs, and then we publish it on, on the website and on, on, on special reports. We do it as a labor of love. So everything is, uh, you know, it, it's free because we believe that if uh, that a rising tide lifts all both, basically, if everyone's is more educated, I believe the less people will drown in debt. I believe the less people will make uh, bad financial choices and that will create its own trickle effect. Um, and, and we'll make, obviously, uh, the global economy function much better. All right. So moving into 2020, a couple of weeks away, um, yeah. new decade, we, we know about problems. And so what, what do you think 2020 will look like to kick off this new decade? Are you seeing some, 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 some issues here in the U.S. or the trade situation, which has reportedly come to a stall? So that's not looking good. And so what, what are you seeing 2020 looking like as of now? Well, uh, it's, it's – look – from 2016 to 2019, the S&P 500 is up about 70%. That's insane. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a lot. Um, it, since the December, uh, you know, last year alone, it's up 35%. That's eight. That's about four and a half times its normal um, yearly gains of about seven and a half percent. We've had an incredible year. 2019 has been amazing. Um, it's been the best performing year for the stock market since 2013. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely in a situation where uh, these low interest rates, very low interest rates, um, and, and the fact that uh, workers are not unionized, in other words, they, they can't do much to impact their wages. Uh, they don't strike anymore. There's, a, there's a, an endless pool of uh, skilled, worker, uh, skilled workers around the world. English speakers, there's a way to 
uh, outsource, uh, you know, high manu high cost manufacturing jobs from the Western world to, to the East. There's so much money that corporations are making um, that, uh, a, you know, the stock market is very valuable. It's, we live in what I call an expensive world. Um, if you can imagine that DJ was not playing music in real, in real terms, it was, it was sending in pumping liquidity into, in, into the economy. What is pumping liquidity? It just means that it creates credit or debt that is very cheap. In other words, for 10 years, people, uh, corporations, governments, and, and rich individuals have been uh, able to borrow at very low rates and buy assets because what does, what does a corporation buy? What does a, um, a, a rich institution buy? It doesn't buy food at the grocery store. That's why you don't see epic inflation at the grocery store. You don't see inflation for everyday items. You see inflation in assets mm -hmm. because when I can lend, when I can borrow, I'm sorry, um, you know, funds at two and two and a half percent, turn around and go to Orlando, Florida or to Dallas, Texas or to Phoenix, Arizona and buy real estate that yields six and 7%, I'm making 5% spread over nothing. Mm -hmm. When I can borrow 2%, when the S&P 500 dividend yield is about 2%, uh, so you you know you you're actually getting paid to own stocks. Then you do that, and what happens is this institution buys from this institution, buy from this institution, and all prices get inflated up based on debt. When you start have to pay to pay the be the debt down, these prices will start to deflate down. How much will the deflate down? That's the the question of all questions. And when will the debt be repaid? That's another question. So if they can roll over this debt. Uh, then we can live in, a, in an expensive world for a long time. This is not a bubble world so much as, as, a, as an expensive world. In other words, stocks are not outrageously expensive and they're not in a euphoric mania. Um, real estate, the same thing. They're expensive, but you know, it's not uh, overwhelmingly expensive. Um, we live in a low growth, low inflation, uh, low unemployment world. And in that world, there are many people that are employed We're 50 years lows for unemployment, but the employment opportunities are crap. Uh, a lot of jobs, a lot of career path. Uh, they're not a letter that you can climb and reach a hundred grand or 200 grand or a quarter million a year. Many of them are dead end jobs. So you do have a job, but uh, whoever makes the money is the corporation and its shareholders. And that's not for the most part, that's not you. So if we continue to live in that sort of an environment, then this, uh, what we've seen in the last decade will play out in the coming years as well. I see a change coming because you can, you can listen to the, to the people in the party saying, hey, this party has gone on long enough. Not the people at, at the bottom telling you, hey, I, I want to join the party. The people at the party itself are saying, whoa, remember, that at any moment, these people can barge these doors. They're much more than us. We're 10%, they're 90%. It's like, it's like in, in bug story, right? If, if, the, if, the, uh, if the bugs, if the ants ever figure out that they're more than the bugs. So, um, it, and that's what's going on right now. The, the Patsy are, are the billionaires. It used to be the deep state. It used to be the Federal Reserve, etc. There's always someone that the general population is, is um, looking as the the uh, the you know the the, the party to, to blame, and that's the issue. The, there is going to be a change. Um, there are going to be uh, solutions introduced, and the fear is obviously that they're going to be um, you know not the right solutions because taxing the the wealthy, taxing the billionaires on whatever ninety percent of their uh, or eighty percent or seventy percent when they have to work for more than six months out of the year for the government and, six, and less than six months for themselves, you're, you're creating an economy where people are disincentivized uh, to do many things, especially when you know, uh, most of them uh, uh, conduct some sort of a philanthropy um, and, 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 and they bring value. Yeah. Uh, the, most billionaires, 50% of billionaires come from innovation. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, yeah. It, so that lets me know that more people need to think outside the box and begin innovating themselves in an entrepreneurial manner before they're 
without a job in a sense. Well, just yeah. just remember, Mike, the there's there's money. Mm-hmm. There's money. There's money. There's money that, that, that is looking for good ideas. If people have good ideas, they can knock on doors of private equity firms and they can sit down with very smart people that can tell them yes or no to their ideas. Um, we do live in a world where the money is centered and then the masses you know, are, are, are working paycheck to paycheck. But if you have a great idea, then you can connect with money. Uh, much more than before. Could you imagine 30 or 40 years ago, you had a great idea and where would you go? Could you connect that? Now you can connect online with crowdfunding platforms and get your idea funded in, in 24 hours. Um, you know, you can, you can Google the top equity firms in the world and send them your business plan. There, you know, it, the problem is that uh, most people can't, understand that the miracle is over and if they can understand that they can understand that people on the other side of the world um, you know people that are now sleeping while we're doing this interview 2.5 billion people in the east in india and in china and and, in the surrounding areas are going to wake up and they don't have a problem working two jobs 12 hour days and and uh, providing for their families when you can understand that that you're you're competing with those people Half of them are no English. If you can understand that, then you will get that firecracker in your ass as well and understand that you have to perform. You have to perform. Uh, the, the gaps are closing, and uh, it's great in terms of the fact that we have more engineers in the world today than ever before. We have more doctors than ever before. We have more of everything, but it means more competition as well. So... That's where you need to. That's where your head needs to be at. Interesting, Leo Gantz. As we draw towards the end, I'm curious to get because uh, you kind of gave us one. Give us three action steps that Leo Gantz would take for this new decade to set himself a, set himself apart from the crowd. You gave us kind of one, but if you want to build on another two or three, feel free to do so. Sure. I look. The first thing I would say is that any person in the Western world needs to diversify its, its, its cash savings into gold and silver. If, if you own fiat currency as a means of saving for, for, for you know, in other words, if, if in the next two, three, four, five years, you have obligations and you're saving up for those obligations, take at least 30% of that cash value and convert it into physical gold and silver. Uh, what I do, if you go to wealthresearchgroup.com forward slash gold playbook, you'll see the most comprehensive uh, gold and silver investing guide online Um, and and within it you'll see that what i do is i've taken 24 months so in other words two years of my lifestyle burn rate my family unit whatever we spend as a unit me my wife and and our daughter and i've converted 24 months into physical gold and silver so if there's a slowdown if there's a panic if there's a depression that is even two years long a very long depression i have converted cash into fiat currency Uh, that's one thing the second thing is how do you grow your existing wealth in case that the world keeps chugging along, keeps moving forward without a great depression, without another 2008? How do you create a, you know, a great investment portfolio? And thirdly, the, so that's the second part. How do you create a, a great uh, investment portfolio? But uh, the third part is, is actually the first part. How do you create capital in the first place? That's the problem that most people face, not how to invest their capital that they have not how to diversify their capital, how to get capital in the first place. Because as I said, 75 million out of 150 million Americans work at jobs that pay less than $50,000 a year. That's half of the working population. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out how to become more valuable. And you're not only competing with that other guy, you're competing with automation, technology, and robotics. Um, So you're competing with, with, um, you know, other employees that are not even human, that can work 24 seven. We are living, we are transitioning into a thinking world. People have to uh, become better decision makers. They have to have more emotional control. The, the skills that are important for the 21st century are not the skills that were important in the 20th century. Um, if in the 20th century you needed to screw levers or do stuff that's delicate with your hands, that's done with. 
now you need to, you, you, you know, um, Jeff Bezos said it in, in a very nice way. He said, look, a high paid executive is paid to sit around for most of the day and make two or three key decisions that will impact the earnings of the company in a meaningful way. And that's true. Most people need to understand that they, if they want to have more worth for the marketplace, they need to read more. They need to know more. They need to network more. That's what's important right now. They need to lead more. If you're not reading right now, if you're not reading books, you're regressing. If you're not a student of, uh, you know, of the business that you're in, you're regressing. You need to become an expert at whatever you're doing. And that's how you can write your own ticket in life and become indispensable to your clients. Uh, you know, if you, if you find a niche that you like and that you're good at, that is uh, uh, what the 21st century is going to be all about. Uh, I can give you a very nice example of that. Look, hairdressers are not, you know, they're, they're, they're specializing right now in mini niches. There's a guy who does only eyebrows. There's a guy who does only your shave. Even, you know, uh, uh, something as fundamental as, a, as getting your haircut is getting into mini industries. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're looking for somebody to help you with uh, marketing, for example, there's one person that, there's one company that only does banners. There's another company that only does this. The world is becoming more and more specialized and you need to figure out where you fit in, in that mix. Um, and, and that's how you, you climb that ladder um, much faster, much faster than what the U.S. economy will continue to grow at, uh, which is about two, two and a half percent. Don't expect anything else. Right. Leo Gantz, as always, it's great to hear your thoughts and opinions on what's going on. And so can you, for those that might just be coming across Leo Gantz for the first time, can you point me in a direction and so they can find out more about you? Yeah, go to the wealthresearchgroup.com uh, uh, website. Uh, on, uh, the first thing you'll see is where you can subscribe to the free newsletter. Um, that's the best way to keep up to date with whatever I'm doing in my own portfolio uh, and whatever I'm thinking about in terms of what are my biggest concerns, biggest catalysts. Um, anything about the macro economy right above that you'll see a top menu where you can click on special reports and you'll see a wealth of uh, special reports with regards to anything from gold silver cryptocurrencies the general economy trump um, you name it uh, investing principles it's all out there all right sounds good once again laura gans it's been great having you on the show looking forward to getting your thoughts uh in 2020 definitely as things get started and go from there but once again, thanks for joining us here. Appreciate you. Thank you, sir.